Y'all ready for an awesome, awesome day? I know you, you, you people are my real people, you know what I'm saying? You know why. You lost an hour of sleep. You fought through coronavirus to get to this service today. I mean, y'all are awesome. Hey, and if we've never met, I already think you're awesome. My name's TJ. Hopefully, we can think each other are awesome someday, okay? Uh, Pastor here, and today's an exciting day because we get to kick off a brand new series. And if it is your first time with us, it's the perfect Sunday because now you get to start from the very beginning of a series. So we can come the next four weeks. We'll talk about the same subject. That's how we do things around here, all right? Uh, so this morning, uh, I want to talk about chasing purpose. And purpose is something that we all know that we're supposed to have in our life, right? Nobody else thinks that? That's cool. Okay. I'm supposed to live on purpose. I'm supposed to live with purpose. God asked me to do some things with intentionality. And, and so uh, when it comes to this purpose in life, we know that we are supposed to have purpose, but uh, discovering what that purpose is is sometimes kind of difficult, isn't it? You're like, well, wait, wait, what do I do with my life? What, what are the things that I'm supposed to ent- do? And what are the things I'm not supposed to do? What are, what are the things that are special and unique to me? What are some of the things that everybody is supposed to do and, and make sure I'm doing those? And there's these different things that we try to talk about when it comes to purpose. Uh, and so there's a theme verse that I want to share with you guys. It uh, comes from the book of Ephesians, chapter 2, verse 10. And it says this, we are God's handiwork. God created you by his own hands. There's this creation about you that, that even the book of Jeremiah tells us that he knit us together in, his, in our mother's womb. There is this creation thing. We're created in Christ Jesus to do good work. So God made you, and he made you for a reason. Amen and amen. There is a reason you're here. No one is purposeless. Everyone has a purpose, which God prepared in advance for you to do. He's always had a plan for you. That's good news, isn't it? Because sometimes you walk through life and you feel like you're an extra. Like when, you know what an extra is? An extra is a person who's not the main character in the movie. They're just that person walking down the sidewalk while you look at the real people. And sometimes in life, there's this, these seasons that we go through and we feel like we're the extras, that somebody else is living with purpose. Someone else has passion that I don't have. Someone else is making a difference that I can't make. Someone else has the talents that I don't have. And so I'm an extra. But the truth is, is that God has a purpose for you. That you are created and created for a reason. And he has a plan for you that has always been there. Good news. Amen. Yeah. You are not an extra. I mean, some of you are extra. You know what I'm saying? But... (laughs) <laughs> you guys, some of you are like, what does that mean? It's like, don't worry about it. If you know what it means, if you get it, you get it, okay? Now, when it comes to uh, this purpose, there's, there's a popular thought that goes around right now, um, especially among our inspirational Instagrammers of the world, um, about passion and doing what you love. And, you know, like, okay, I'm going to read a couple to you. And, and if you, you if, I mean, I think passion is important. I think doing what you love is important. But some of these are a little bit, extra. You know what I'm saying? Check this out. All right, let's look at these. When you do what you love, it's not work anymore. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Um, except for sometimes it is. You, you know what I'm saying? Like, like, I love my kids. Sometimes they're work. Like, I love my job, but there are things that I do that are just, they're work. Anybody? Oh, and you, it's, a, it's a nice thought, but in reality, is it always true? I got three people that agree with me. All right, let's go to the next one. If you're not doing what you love, you're wasting your life. That's, that's a little harsh, don't you think? Man, I'm, every time I do the dishes, I am wasting my life. Any, like, like paper plates from now on, guys. Right? <laughs> you're like, amen to that, brother. I learned it in church today. Okay. Let's go on. Only do what you love. Do only do what you love. Only pursue what feels like you. I can't even explain what this means. Only do what feels like you. Um, sometimes I don't feel like much. <laughs> so I'm going to skip this one. We're going to go to the next one. All right. Do it with passion or not at all. Are there some things that you would rather not do at all? There's some things that you don't do with passion, right? 
You're like, man, I'm not taking the garbage out ever again. Some of us are passionate about garbage. I am not. Some people are super passionate about many different things I am not passionate about. So no longer do you have to change diapers. No longer do you have to do dishes. No longer do you have to take out the trash because you're going to do it with passion or not at all. It's foolish, isn't it? Okay, let's go to the next one. Uh, All you need is passion. If you have a passion for something, you'll create the talent. You can see how this could fall short a little bit, don't you think? Like, I'm really passionate about the NBA. Am I ever going to make it? Don't, don't dash my dreams, guys. I will always be six foot, white, and talentless when it comes to basketball. You know what I'm saying? Like, I can work real, real hard. The talent will not catch up. But, some, but, we, but we think that because we don't have these things, that we are extras in somebody else's play. One more I got for you. Choose a job you love and you'll never work a day in your life. Is it true? Like, how many of you guys have loved a job before? Yeah? When you love that job, are there still parts of it that are hard work? Yes. So here's here's the deal. Oftentimes, we go through life and we look at these things like, do it with passion, love what you do. And you, you look at your life and you think, man, I don't have passion. That means I'm not a real person. That means I'm an extra in somebody else's life. You guys get where I'm going? And, 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 and if I haven't found my passion yet, I just need to bide my time until I do find my passion. But the truth is you were never meant to chase passion, but live with purpose. Because when you live with purpose, I believe passion will come. But you do not start with passion. The world will tell you, ooh, love it. Go passionate after it. No, no, no. Start with purpose. Start with meaning. And when you chase meaning and you chase purpose and you try to live out the purposes of God for your life, passion will come after that. So I've got five things I want to share. I've got five points this morning, so I can't waste any more time. i got to move, okay? Number one, check this out. If you're taking notes, write it down. Stop living a half-life. Stop living a half-life. Here's what we do. We believe that we have to live with passion. We believe that there is passion out there for us, and until we find the passion, we can't actually start living. You ever have that feeling before? Maybe you never said it, but you felt that, right? Well, that person's so passionate. Look at them. They're living at the next level of life, and here I am just wondering what my passion is, living half alive until I find that mysterious passion that is out there in the world for me. And you get your hopes up every once in a while thinking, oh, I found my passion. And then you start to do it and you realize, nope, it's just another boring thing that I do. And then you find your passion over here and you're like, it's nice, it's cool, but maybe it's just not really my thing. And your passion goes away. And you feel like as you chase life, as you go through life, the passion eludes you time and time and time again. You're living a half-life. You're alive, but you're waiting for this other half of your life to be completed by this mystery called passion. And until you find it, you've, you're just going to live in the mundane. You're going to live as an extra. You're going to live going through the, the doldrums of life time and time again. You're alive, but you're not fully alive because you're missing something. And that's the lie that we have often believed. But the truth is, is that we were never meant to chase a single passion from day one, anyway. Like, we can have passion later on, and I think it's important. But before we get to passion, we need to fall in love with purpose. Look what it says in the book of Proverbs, chapter 19. It says, you can make many plans. We we can make plans to find our passion. Sometimes we even look at the lives of other people, and we go, wow. And they're living with a lot of passion. They're making a big impact. They've got the life that I want to live. Let me look at the formula of what they did. Ooh, I'm going to make a plan to live like they've lived because I want to get the result that they've gotten. And so we make these plans to get to the passion, to get to the purpose, to get to the things in the life that we really want. But look at what it says after this. You make the many plans, but the Lord's purpose is what prevails. See, you can can try to make any plan you want to obtain any passion that you think is the best thing for you, but it all needs to start somewhere else, and that's the Lord's purpose in our life, and the Lord's purpose in his kingdom, and the Lord's purpose in our world. And when we adopt God's 
purpose, passion comes out of that. That's where it starts. This next verse is, um, it's one of my favorite verses, not because I'm like, ooh, it motivates me so much. I just kind of laugh, okay? You guys ready for this? Anybody ever laugh when you read scripture? And sometimes it's like, amen. Sometimes it's like, oh, me. That's kind of, ooh, it hurts, but it's funny at the same time. Okay, I'm gonna, Proverbs does it again, the same chapter. It says, people ruin their lives by their own foolishness. We're trying to chase, chase, chase things that never deliver. And then they're angry at the Lord. I'm blaming God for my chasing of things that I never should have been chasing. You guys aren't laughing with me. I think it's hilarious. I look at my own life and go, yep, I did that one. Yep, I did that too. Oh my gosh, when I chased that passion, I thought it was passion, but what it really turned out to be was something foolish, and then I blamed God for my own foolishness. Anybody? Not a single honest person in the whole place. I've done that. I've, done, I've, I've walked through life going, oh, maybe this is the thing. God, no, this is not the thing. God, why haven't you given me my passion yet? God, why haven't you given me this, this undeniable force, this, this thing that I'm born with, born to do? God, what is it that you, nothing. God, I'm so mad because I've been chasing all these things and none of it is delivered. But the truth is, God never starts with passion in our life. He starts with purpose in our life. He starts with the routine. He starts with the things that he's called us to. Simple, simple things. Jesus was teaching on the shore one day, and he saw some fishermen, and he said, hey, put out into the deeper water. And so Peter and his uh, fishing business partner go out to deep water with Jesus, and he says, put your nets down. And they're like, Jesus, we've been fishing all night long, man. Like, we are not passionate about this right now, right? Like, it just, we, we, we have nothing, We've been fishing, and it's just, and they, he goes, do it. And so they do it. They put the nets down. And when the nets come up, they're so full of fish that they can't even hold them in the net. They have to call their business partners off the shore, and they fill two boats to the verge of sinking. And then this happens. Check it out. When Simon Peter realized what had happened, he fell to his knees before Jesus and said, oh, Lord, please leave me. I'm such a sinful man, for he was awestruck by the number of fish they had caught, as, they, as were the others with him. His partners, James and John, the sons of Zebedee, were also amazed. Jesus replied to Simon, his name's Simon Peter, don't be afraid. From now on, you'll be fishing for people. As soon as they landed, they left everything, and they followed Jesus. Now, Peter had a business he had a life. He had everything lined up. And what Jesus brought to him was the fulfillment of all the things he could have been passionate about in that moment. Because he was a businessman. Let, let's think about you. Maybe you're, you're in sales. And this guy, Jesus, comes by and he goes, hey, you want to go there? And you want to talk to that person? And, and you're going to land the biggest contract of your entire life. It'll, it'll, it'll double your annual salary. And you go and you get the double the annual salary. And you're like, I love this. I'm passionate about this one. But Jesus looks at Peter after Peter realizes that Jesus is a man of God. He goes, Jesus, you got to leave. I'm too sinful to be near you. And Jesus is like, hang on. That thing that you thought was your passion, the thing that I just brought you to your knees over, let's leave that behind because I've got a great purpose for you. I've got some, uh, you, you thought this was important? The, the, the passion of, of making money and doing the business. He goes, guess what? I'm going I'm to teach you an entirely different way to fish. I'm going to give you the purpose that you've always been longing for. And Peter goes, all right, I'm in. Listen, we live half lives sometimes. Our life is half lived because we're waiting for this mystery to happen, this passion to come alive, this love of what we do. But the truth is, we need to put that to the side for a while because purpose is far more important. The second thing we need to think about is this. Passion isn't a prerequisite for purpose. I think we get the two flipped sometimes. You don't need to be passionate about something to do something. You don't need to be passionate about the things that God calls you to do because sometimes God just calls you to do things and you do it. But I'm not passionate about it. No, don't worry about it. There's purpose behind it. Pastor Justin was with us last week, Pastor Justin Jenkins. Uh, he's from Lawrence, Kansas. He gave us a great sort of line. He goes, we serve God by serving others. And you don't even need to pray about it. You just go do it. It's this really broad, wide, open sort of invitation to purpose. It, it's simple. There's nothing complex about it. And it's just, 
here you go, do it. But I'm not passionate about it. No, no, you don't have to be passionate about it because there's purpose in it. And when you, when you take the wide, broad path, aren't the stakes lowered? Because when we think about passion, that's our one thing. When we think about purpose, you can do it in all things. And when you're doing it in all things, it, the stakes are really low. Because if you do something and you don't love it, that's okay. It was just, I was just accomplishing God's purpose. And you do something else and, okay, we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna try this thing over here and we're going to accomplish God's purpose. And that's not your passion? That's fine. You didn't make a mistake. You didn't chase after something meaningless. There was purpose in it. And you keep trying and you keep doing these things on the broad path. And then one day, I believe... As you do the broad things, God will bring you the narrow path of passion. Check out this quote from Antonio Antonio Machado. Traveler, there is no path. The path is made by walking. And I want you to think about this. The path of your passion comes when you start to walk out your purpose. And there are purposes in you that Jesus has already given. You do not need to pray about them. You do not need to think about them. It's just a simple invitation. Come, follow me. Look at what Jesus did when in John chapter one. The next day, Jesus decided to go to Galilee and he found Philip and he said to him, come, follow me. Does it sound like this deep plea of passion from Jesus to Philip? No, it's a simple invitation. And I think God today is looking at you and he's going, come, follow me. I've got a purpose for you. I've got something that we can do together. So you might be going, okay, well, what is this purpose? How do I I figure out what God's purposes are for my life? Well, the list is long and broad. I mean, we could go all day, all series about what the purposes of God are, but Paul summarizes it like this, 1 Corinthians chapter 10. So whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do it all for the glory of God. When you're doing it all for the glory of God, there's great purpose there, isn't there? Like, I think purpose is broad, it's wide. And we get caught up sometimes in the thought, man, I need my specific thing. What's my unique, different thing that I need to have? That's your passion, but we don't start there. If you wanna get to your passion, you gotta take the broad, wide road, creating the path of purpose, and in all things, chasing after him. All right, number three, check this out. When you know better, do better. In my life, I've run around in circles chasing passion. God, what is it? 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 On the treadmill of life, God, come on, what would give it to me, give it to me, give it to me. And I never moved forward in life because I was so enthralled with the one thing. What is the one thing you have for me, God? That I never really began to see that his thing was really wide for me. And I could, if I just did the things that he asked me to do, it would move me forward in life. So once we know that, hey, wait a minute, I've been living a half-life for or I've been, I've been trying to chase something that won't satisfy. I've been chasing this passion when I should actually be, be finding purpose in him, doing all things to glorify him. If that's us, we can, now that we know better, we can do better, right? I love what, I love what uh, Paul says in the book of Philippians. He says this, no, dear brothers and sisters, I have not achieved it, but I focus on this one thing forgetting the past and looking toward what lies ahead. I press on to reach the end of the race and receive the heavenly prize for which God through Christ Jesus is calling us. He's saying, I've made mistakes. And if you look at the life of Paul, he made a lot of mistakes. He persecuted the church. He killed Christians. He chased them down. If you look at the life of Peter, the man who had this incredible catch of fish and left it all behind, all of the old passions of his life and followed the purpose of Jesus, you look at him, it's hysterical. It's kind of funny the way he goes through the the ups and downs of his learning. Because if you look at him on the Mount of Transfiguration, Jesus is transformed. God's voice is my son who I'm well pleased. It's an incredible, incredible moment in the history of Jesus' life and the disciples there. And Peter's like looking around he's going, oh, it's so good that we're here right now. Yeah, it's awesome. He has this incredible experience. And then other times he's saying, Jesus, you can't talk about crucifixion. That's terrible. You need to stop talking that way. And Jesus says, hey, get behind me, Satan. So he's at one point with God's voice speaking over them to the next point where he's being called Satan, to the next point where he's uh, walking on water, to the next point where he's sinking, to the next point where he's denying Christ, to the next point where he's preaching and 3,000 people get saved, up and down, up and down. But every single time, once he knew better, he did better. And in my life, I can live with regret if I want to, but I don't have to. 
I don't have to live with regret over what was, regret over what was. I can live with an eye on the future knowing that if I'm here today and I know better, I'm gonna take some time and I'm gonna start doing better. I didn't know then, but I know now. I didn't know how to find passion earlier. I didn't know how to find purpose, but now, now I know. And so God, I'm gonna live with purpose in all things. Know better, do better. The fourth thing is this. This is, this is actually my favorite. Do the simple things. Do the simple things. My life, I make it complicated. How about you guys? Like life is complicated, but there are some things that are so simple that I complicate them by default. Jesus makes everything super simple. He wants to keep our eyes on the simple things. I love this verse uh, in in the book of John chapter 21. Uh, It's at the end of Jesus's life. He's died on the cross. He's risen again. He kind of reinstates Peter as a disciple because he denied Christ and Peter's like, I've given up. And and Jesus brings him back kind of into the fold. And then he says this to Peter. Jesus told him, follow me. And Peter turned around and saw behind them the disciple that Jesus loved, that is John, the author of this book. And Peter says this. Peter asked Jesus, what about him? Well, why is he coming? You said, let me follow you. And John's coming too. What's going on? And I love Jesus' response. And if I could tell you anything about keeping it simple and doing the simple things of following the purpose of what God's called you to, it would be Jesus' words. He says this, if I want him to remain alive until I return, what's that to you? As for you, follow me. Can, Can I give you the TJ paraphrase version? Mind your own business and do what I told you to. Right? Like, like, think about it. I get so distracted by someone else's path that I miss my own. I get so distracted by someone else's passion that I miss my purpose. What about, God, what about that person over there? I don't know that they're doing it right. You didn't invite them, and Jesus is like, mind your own business. As for you, follow me. I need to put this on the wall of my office. As for you, follow me. But you don't understand. There's people out there that are doing this and doing that, and, and there's people that are doing these things over here. And, and, and what, about, what about the passion over there? Should I do what they're doing over there? And should I, should I take on this new thing that seems super cool? Shut up and listen. As for you, follow me. Do the simple things well, and God will begin to add things you never thought possible. Do small things. You can clap. That's cool. I know it's Time Change Sunday. Half of you guys are like, what are we talking about right now? I get it. But listen, the path is really broad. Sometimes it feels like a wilderness. Purpose. What's my purpose? Just start walking and the path will form. Just start doing and your passion will come alive. Just start being a witness for Christ. Just start being generous with your life. Just start living the life and chasing after a God who loves you and doing all things with purpose and pretty soon your passion will start to narrow down and you're gonna find something that you're designed to live for but it starts with purpose. Don't focus on what other people are doing. Walk your path. All right, number five, pay attention to the whisper. Now, I've preached a whole series on hearing the voice of God, but this is not what this is about. It's not the whisper of God saying to you, go this way, go that way, do these things, do that thing. It's, it's It's a different one. It's the whisper of interest. The whisper of, oh, that's, that's interesting. The whisper of, oh, oh, that's kind of cool. Oh, I've never really thought about that. Well, I like what they're doing. Oh, that's kind of fun. Oh, that looks like it's something I could do with my life. Right, like, like just little interesting things. Like, oh, the mission trip's coming up? Yeah, that's kind of that's interesting. That's cool, okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, I, I could, the growth track, maybe? Oh, yeah, that, that's kind of interesting. I wonder what that's all about. But the problem is many times we have a whisper and we never do anything with it. Listen, could it be that your interests are the seeds of your passion? 
Could, could it be the thing that you go, oh, that's interesting? Is interesting because God's trying to take you on a journey to find your passion? That when you're interested in a thing that's purposeful, then maybe you should start to see if that grows in your life. I know in my life, when I first got called into ministry, I was like, God, that's cool. Can I stay behind the scenes? Can I like work with the numbers and papers in the back, right? Can I make sound or can I, at worst, God, okay, I'll get on the stage if I'm playing a guitar. That's it. But over the course of my life, these little things, oh, that's interesting, begin to come up. Oh, that's, that's hmm, I wonder, what, I wonder what that's about. I remember sitting in uh, an office with our young adults director, and he goes, hey, you want to preach a sermon this week? And I was like, nope. He goes, come on, you can do it. And, and then he began to talk to me, and I'm like, oh, well, that's actually kind of interesting. It was like a little seed got planted inside of me. In our young adults group, 14 people sat around the chairs that night, and I gave them a little message. It was really like a devotional. It probably was terrible. But there was like this little seed that I was like, oh, that was kind of cool. I'm glad that God got to use me. Good thing I'm never going to do that again, right? And then my youth pastor tapped me on the shoulder. And he's like, hey, hey, um, I heard you do good at the young adults thing. Why don't you, in three weeks, I want you to do the message for the youth. And I was like, no, thank you. I'm good. Thank you very much. I appreciate the offer, but I'm not going to do that. That's terrible. That'd be terribly scary. I can't do that. No, no, no. It's like, I'll mix the sound, though. I'll say amen from the back. Thank you. But I did it anyway, even because he insisted, and he's like, you got to do this. I'm like, okay. Because I was a student and intern at the church, and he's like, well, you don't really have a choice. This you have to. And I'm like, okay. And I found interest there. And, and a couple more seeds were planted, and, and, and leaves begin to poke through the earth, Right? I began to understand, like, oh, oh, when those 40 kids responded to the gospel that I preached that night, I was like, I think I found something that's really interesting, maybe a little more than interesting. Maybe it's a little something that I could, like, do my entire life. But the seeds of your passion are your interests. And when you walk through life ignoring the interesting things, you miss the fruit that is one day your passion. You have to pay attention to the little things because God wired you a certain way. He put inside of you a certain DNA that that is interested in, oh, that little minute part of the body of Christ. Some of you, like you, you hear missions like I talked about earlier, and you're like, ain't no way. And some of us, you're going, oh my gosh, it's it's kind of cool, kind of interesting. Hey, maybe God wired you that way on purpose. When you hear a need and you're like, ooh, I think somebody needs to give and support that need in that ministry or in that send that kid to camp that they can't go unless they have the money. And you're like, mm, I, there's, there's something that sparks inside of you. There's an interest and that interest is that generosity and that you wanna go above and beyond your giving to make sure that's taken care of. For some of us, we're, we're walking through life and we, we have this little, little bit of gifting inside of us. Maybe it's, it's, we can sing. Maybe we have the gift of hospitality, but we're not really using our gifts right now. And we go, hmm, it's interesting that God gave me these things. I wonder what he wants me to do with them, right? No, it's not interesting that he gave them to you. He gave them to you with purpose. And those seeds will begin to grow in your life when we act on the interest. You have to act on the interest. It does no good dreaming about your future. You must build it. You don't discover your passion. You build it. The path is not formed already. You don't, you don't find the mystery path on the journey of life that leads you to your passion. You blaze the trail with planting the seeds of interest, following down the road. It is step by step, moment by moment, discovering what it is God created you for. But it starts with the broad, doesn't it? It starts with the wide. Look at Jesus' words in Matthew chapter 28. Jesus came and told his disciples, this is after he's uh, resurrected, I have given you all authority in heaven and on earth. Therefore, go and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Can we go on to the next one? There we go. Teach these new disciples to obey all the commands I have given you and be sure of this, I am with you always even to the end of the age. This is a very broad statement, isn't it? Go, is it to a specific place? No. He says, go everywhere. And he says, go talk to, is it a certain group of people? No. It's pretty broad, isn't it? 
Teach them what? Teach them this one little thing about me? No, teach them everything about me, all the commands, right? He says, start broad, go. And I believe that as you go, step by step by step, God will go, ooh, see that part that was interesting to you? Chase it. See that thing that, you were, that, that really drew you in? Go after it. But I don't know if I'm passionate about that, God. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter because your passion hasn't come yet. Chase it. See what God's gonna do through you. See what he can open up to you. And don't worry about passion, worry about purpose. I love this last verse in 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 9. It says, for God saved us and called us to live a holy life. There's a reason for that. He did this not because we deserved it, but because that was his plan from the beginning of time. He had a plan from the beginning of time to redeem you. And as we learned in Ephesians chapter 2, there's a reason why he redeemed you. There's a reason why he created you. You are his handiwork, creating Christ Jesus to do good works, which he prepared in advance long ago for you to do. So when he's going through this verse, not because you deserved it though, it's because his plan was always to use you, always to redeem you, always to invite you into a purpose. His plan has always been there for you to start to walk the path and let him lead you into a passion. This is his plan to show us his grace through Christ Jesus. Isn't that where it all starts? Man, you can, you can be passionate about anything in the world, but without Christ Jesus redeeming and renewing us, it's not gonna be as impactful and purposeful and intentional as if we were with him. So let me, let me do something real quick. I want you to ask yourself, where am I with Christ? Am I good? Am I not good? Do I know him? Do I not know him? Because that's going to determine a lot about your next step. If you know him, amazing. Amazing. Your question now is, what's my interest? What's the thing that I could take the next step in? What's the thing that God can make me step out or help me step out into? If you don't know him, your next step is, well, I need to know him. Because in him, I'll actually find purpose for my life. In him, I'll find fulfillment. In him, I'll find peace. And today, that's what I want you to do. So we have two questions. If you do know him, okay, God, what's this interest? What's this thing? Should it help me, give me the strength, the courage to step out. If you don't know him, you need to ask yourself the question, do I want to? Should I? And I believe that that's you this morning. God's already working on your heart and he's saying, yes, yes, you should. There's actually a pull or a tug on you right now. Let's close our eyes and pray for a minute. With that question on your heart, the question that was for you, you should take a moment and respond to God by saying yes to the interest, yes to the purpose, or saying yes to him. God, I, I need you in my life. If you need him in your life and you've never really said, God, I'm all in, I want you in every piece of my life. I surrender everything I am to you. I want you to pray a simple prayer with me and just something like this. Jesus, today I pray that you will forgive me. I'm all in. I know what you did on the cross and I know that you have purpose for me. That's why I'm surrendering everything I am to you and that purpose. Thank you, Jesus. In your name we pray. Everybody says, come on, put your hands together, people that prayed that prayer. Thank you so much for joining us online today. If you prayed that prayer with us, we would like to help you on your spiritual journey. If you don't mind going to theshorechurch.com or emailing us at hello at theshorechurch.com, we can send you some information to start this spiritual journey of faith. And of course, we'd always love to see you in person at the Shore Church, 3375 Fruitvale Road.